Hello, today we're going to create a service call using uh, Abup Webden Pro. We'll start by going to Transaction SE80. Once we're here, we're going to create a new application. So we'll type ZWP Flight Demo. Press Enter. Since this does not exist yet, to create a new object. And then we'll give it a little quick description. It's given us a default window name and view name. Those will work for us. All right, we're just going to create a local object. We're going to right click on our component, go to create, select service call. This will bring up the Webden Pro wizard. We'll just click continue. And then we're going to select the controller. We're going to use an existing con controller. And then we we'll just select the only one available. And you can see what we're really selecting is this component controller right under our component. So we double click on that. Now that's selected and we'll continue to the next step. We're going to select a function module in our demo, but you can also use class methods. So we'll continue here. And then the function module we're going to use is boppy flight get list. Get list. We'll continue. And this is where it can be a little more challenging because you have to know the object type. It doesn't always uh, pre-select the correct object type here. So what I usually do is we're going to open up a new uh, a new session. So I'll cancel this real quick. We'll, it's real quick to get back into. We'll go into SE37. And this will allow us to run function modules. We'll go to the boppy flight get list. And we'll execute that by clicking the little wrench here. And you can see we have our import parameters and our tables. So we know our import parameters are airline, destination from, destination to, and max rows, whereas our uh, tables are date range, extension in, flight list, extension out, and return. So we'll minimize this, go back to our service call. I can run through this real quick. Now over here, we know the airline, the destination from, destination to, and the max rows, those are actually uh, parameters of a method. So we're going to select it for these three. And then if we go lower, we have the rest of these. Um, we know those are all the tables. And what we want is we want these tables to turn in context nodes. If they turn into contact nodes, we can actually, it will build the context for us, which is super convenient. So one of the best perks of using the service call wizard. So we'll click continue. You can see, uh, we know you did a good job of it's actually bringing in this last step, your method and your description. So we'll click continue again, and we'll click the complete button. So we successfully created our first service call, and it brings us right to our context node. If it didn't, just uh, you can just click the context tab. You drop that down, and you can see we have all the tables. So we have all the tables and their values, their attributes, and so we didn't have to manually create all of these, which saves us a ton of time. So we'll go into our main view. Well, let's quick save that real quick. We'll go into our main view, and if you go over to the context tab, you can see the the node that we just created through the wizard is in our component controller, but it's not in our main context yet. So we'll want to drag this over, like in our last lesson. Drop that right there. Now we can actually access this new node. So we'll go back to the layout view, and we're going to use another wizard um, to pull in the table uh, that we just created. So we'll go to wizard, it's a little Harry Potter stick, and we're going to actually want to pull a table. Just double clicked on that. And we can select this table from our context. So we'll drop this down and we're going to show the flight list. So we'll select the flight list, click the green check, and you can see that it's automatically giving us all the attributes. We can uncheck the binding if we do not want a specific attribute like the city two, but we're going to keep them all. Well, I'd say we'll drop, drop the currency ISO. We don't need that one. All right, so we'll say check. All right, so we just brought in a, a new table. We didn't have to create this manually. Again, that would have been another effort in the layout. 
So now if we scroll all the way to the right, you'll notice that we have the currency, but not the currency ISO, because we unchecked the binding there. All right, so we'll save this. We're gonna use one more wizard. So we use the wizard for the service call. We use the wizard uh, to create the layout. Now we're gonna go on to the methods. And remember WD O init. This is the first method run when we go into this view. We'll double click this. And we're gonna use another method to actually pull the data. So we have the layout and we have um, the actual, uh, the contact nodes, but we're not actually calling the, met the method to obtain the data in the table. So to do that, we're gonna create, click the wizard wand again, and we're going to go to gen general, and then click method call and use controller. We're gonna select the only component we have, and then we're going to select method name. The execute BAPI flight get list. We'll select that. And there we go. So this is actually going to call the BAPI flight get list. And we can put in our uh, parameters. Since we select each of these um, fields as parameters, we can see we can actually fill those in here. Before I go any further, I want to point out a problem you might have. As you may notice, if you go into um, create a new session, SE37 or our transaction, and you run the function model BAPI flight get list by clicking execute, if we just execute that with any, any parameters, you notice that all of our table entries are blank, except obviously the return codes, so no flights match or selection conditions. We can manually add entries to the array of flight tables. Um, you can do that by going to slash nsc16. In this transaction, you can see you can select the table name. Um, so the, some of the tables that are used in the, the flights demo are, uh, you have a currencies table, an airlines table, a plane table, a flight table, um, and obviously your bookings and schedules and connections. So let's say if we wanted to um, manually create an airline, so we do SCARR, table SCARR, go into that table, execute, and you'll see down here we have no entries. So if we go back and we click the little create button, we create an entry, we can create a carrier ID and the carrier name, and then the, the currency code, and we'll just type uh, one and then enter a URL for the for the for the carrier. But once we try to save this, you'll notice that the currency uh, there is no currency code one and no, no other codes exist in this table SCURX. So if we go to table SCURX, that's our currencies. So you actually have to fill in all of these tables to actually have a um, a booking. So it can be quite a te tedious pr uh, process. So one way to cheat that is to um, run the program SAP BC Data Generator. So if we go to transaction SE38 that allows us to run programs, um, so what did I say it was? SAP BC Data Generator. Go to that, and we execute this. And you'll see we have a couple options. We have the minimum, the standard, so that gives us uh, the standard gives us 26 flights. Uh, we'll just do the minimum. Um, and then we'll execute this and it'll create those entries for us. Old tables are just be deleted and generated. That's okay. We don't have any old entries. Say yes. So this program's going to run and fill that all for us. So we don't have to go to manually into each table through SE16, which could take us quite a while. All right. So I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go back slash n. AC80. And we'll go back in our flight demo, go into our main view. And we have our method still. Let's change up our parameters here. So we'll go to a new session just to see. I always test it uh, through SC37 first. We'll go to Boppy Flights now that we have code generated. Uh, let's execute this with no values added. We have 108 entries in our flight list. If you click on the little table here, you can see all our different flights. So we have uh, airlines, AA. Let's go do a query. So let's go back one more screen. So we have AA. So we'll 
execute that. Now you can see we have seven uh, results. So cool. So we're going to do that in our code here in uh, WD do a nip. So we'll say airline. To, I'm in display mode, so we'll go to change mode. All right, and we're going to uncomment this line. We'll type in our American Airline. So AA. We'll save this. And of course, we're going to have to create our application before we can test this. So we'll create WebDIM Pro application. So right click on your opponent, create application. That'd be fine. We'll save. We'll do another local object. All right. So now we have our application. But before we uh, test that, we're going to want to activate. So I'm going to double click on our object name, click the activation uh, icon, and activate all of these objects. So right click, test, log on. And you can see we have our table where there's seven results. We're missing the ISO current ISO currency column because we unchecked it in binding. So minimize this. Let's say we want to make this even cooler by showing uh, the airlines based on the user's query. So to do that, we'll go to our root element container and we're going to right click insert element and we'll say uh, airline input. This will be an input field. All right, so we have our input field. We're going to move this above the table. And I'm going to give it a little space. So I'm going to insert element. I'm going to call it space TC and create a transparent container. Move that up right there. There we go. Make sure this height has 10 pixels. So there I have space between my input field and my table. Now I'm going to create a button real quick. So right click again on the root element container, insert element, and I'll call this submit button. It's a type button. So we have that. We'll also move this right above the transparent container. But be careful if I let go of it on the transparent container, I'll probably go in it. So I'm going to do, it's just I'm going to right click on it and say up, up. There it is, right where I want it, right there. So this button name is going to be uh, submit. There we go. And then I want to have a little space between the input box and the button. So I'm going to click on the input box, go on down to the cell design, make there a little bit of right pad. So I have right padding. There we go. All right. So our input. Uh, box. We're actually going to have the uh, attached to a context node. Um, so what we can do is go into the context tab. Since I'm not going to use this anywhere else except the within this view, I'll create it right, it right in the main view. So create uh, context uh, attribute, and we'll call it um, query type string. There we go. So we'll save that. So go back into our layout view. But I have the airline input selected. I'm going to say on my value, and we're going to bind that value to query. So I'll check that there. So now you can see that input is now bound to the query attribute we just created. Now I'm going to select on submit, and we want to create a new method. So whenever that's created, so we go to the on action event. So uh, most of you are familiar with JavaScript, on, on click. Um, it's a similar uh, attribute to the on action event. So we'll create new. Let's say on action. Um, it's not going to be an outbug plunge because we're not going to a uh, different page in this demo. We're on the same page, but we're going to create a new action and say uh, query by airline. So we'll click the checkbox. It just created that new action for us. So if we go on our actions tab. We'll see that there. If we double click on it, we'll get to our method. Perfect. So we have a new method here. So currently, if we go back to, um, let's go in our methods tab. If we go into our WDO init, we have our query on the, the table based on 
the airline AA. So that's a static uh, parameter we put in there. So we're going to cut this out, go back to our now to our new method on action query by airline. We're going to paste this code in there. Now instead of having it static in there, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab the value of that um, input field. We can do that by going to the wizard uh, icon again and we're going to go this time to the context tab and we're going to read a node or attribute. So we select context, we're going to select our query um, attribute and we're going to say OK. So all this code that we just generated with a wizard is actually grabbing um, the attribute query and importing it as this uh, local value here. So we're going to copy this local bear value, LV query. Should I grab that whole thing there? Copy. And we're going to paste that right over our AA static input. So there we go. So now we say airline uh, execute BAPI flight get less where airline equals LV query. So we're going to save this. We're going to go back into our layout. Make sure everything's the way we want it. Perfect. So we'll save. Uh, again, I'm going to double click in the top element in my object tree. Activate. Oop, I have an error. So we'll display the error. This is good for testing purposes. What do we have going on here? So displayed error. LV query is not type compatible with former parameter airline. Alright, so if we want to see what type we're playing around with here, we can go into um, SC37, so I'll create a new session. Alright, SC37. Uh, we'll, this time we'll just display our BAPI flight get list. And if we look in the comments here, I can see the value airline. It's like um, this field type here. So I can copy that. Another way to do it is actually look at the import tab. You can see the import parameter or the import parameters. We look at associated associated type. This is the value, the type we want here. So we can copy that. Now once we have that, we go back into our uh, context tab. Right click on query. We're going to change that. I guess string that was wrong. So we'll paste in the field that we know it is. All right. So we'll save this. Now, uh, before we uh, go any further, before we testing, I want to go into our layout tab, selecting our table, and we'll change the amount of rows we can see by going to visible row count. We'll do create that as 20. All right, you can see now we can see 20 rows. We'll save and we'll activate. We'll give it a test. You can see we have a blank table now because we're no longer calling the function module in the wd w do init method. Uh, we actually moved that into our on action method. So now if we type in AA and click submit, we'll have our American Airlines, our seven rows there. If we do a blank query, we'll have all rows. And we can also, you know, search LH. So there you go. Play around with it. And let me know if you have any questions.